Collision.com. Thank you, Paul Spot, for coming by. Well, what great crane work we got. And I'm not talking about Miyagi. This is the sports report for... Look at that. I like that, buddy. This, this is the sport. Oh, come here. Let me that. It's a paid sponsor right there. Look at this. Right in the Maddie Vision Fund. Yes, oh. yes. Mention him every show, kids. That's good for one haircut. <laughs> <laughs> This is the sports report for November 26th. That's why we got a mugs around. 2007. No. <laughs> wow. Guess what? Spotty! I got a doctor and one handsome Judge Muggsy McLovin bringing you all the local sports. This guy's going to talk some pro stuff. And I'm going to sit here and pretend I know what's talking about, but I'll give you a little tidbit. We're going to be talking about the Falcons. In a little bit. Not so right Atlanta. about this. What? Not the Atlanta not Falcons. The Atlanta. Okay, we're not talking about the Atlanta Falcons, but before he gets slapped in contempt because the gavel did not bang yet. All right. Here come the judge. Here come the judge. Okay. By the way, first of all, we hope you had a great Thanksgiving. How was your holidays? Good. I ate a lot. Ate the doctor ate more than a lot. Uh, I ate my usual self. Anyway, November 26th. We have, a, first of all, house cleaning to do. The boys' soccer state champions from Mountain View. How about that? Yeah, yeah the Screaming Eagles. I don't know if they're the Screaming Eagles, but... Ah! But that they got they got the boys' single-A state soccer championship with a one nothing win over Saliki Academy a couple of weeks ago. Awesome. On the, uh, the strength of a 51st-minute goal from Austin Ma Mack. Awesome. Austin Mack. Return of the Mack. Return the back attack. I'm the DJ. You got it. Congratulations to Coach Thomas and his exceptional crew, undefeated, 18 and 0, and uh, the first time a soccer team has brought home the state gold in soccer. You can't do any better than that. No, you cannot. So, why are you looking at me like that? I don't know. Anyway, congratulations to the Eagles. The, the soccer season is over now. We're down to, as as we stand, we're down to one local team left in football for the fall sports season. That's the Dunmore Bucks. The Bucks, the Bucks march on. Yeah. How do you like your deer meat? Dunmore, buddy. <laughs> Dunmore. Yeah. They are they, they are going through the, the, the single A football state playoffs right now. They are 12 and one after their after their come after two come from behind. No. One come from me. They avenged their loss against Old Forge seven to six a couple of weeks ago in the districts. They they scored the seven nothing, and then Old Forge scored in the third quarter, and the extra point was blocked. Turned That's, out to be a big block. There, yeah. Yes, it did. That's how Dunmore won that game. Seven six, hard fought, from what I heard at Old Forge Memorial Stadium back back to, back two weeks ago, and then played Southern Columbia the the the, the establishment in single A football. Dunmore. Had, had established themselves as a power, but mostly at the double-A level. So this was the first time these two powers had actually met, especially with the two coaches, Coach Raw from Southern Columbia, Coach Hendricks from Dunmore. And it was pretty pretty tight game. Pretty For as high-scoring a game as it was, there was a lot of defense in this game. It was Dunmore that got the win 35-29, coming back from a 14-6 halftime lead deficit, or 7-6 halftime, 14-6 deficit at one point in the third quarter. It, it, was, it, was, a, it was a crazy six-minute stretch for Dunmore. They're down, they're, they fall by 14-6. You look like their offense had been struggling a little bit. Then they get a big kickoff return. Then, they, then the next play, Brand, the quarterback, Brandon Kajowski, who took over in the middle of the season for John Rinaldi, threw a perfect pass to Josh Zilla. They got Dunmore to within 14-12. They get a stop. They get the ball back. And then, could, then, based on the running of Austin Seaman and Dequan Buckley, they get in position again. And then Kajowski threw, threw an interesting pass to Josh Zilla. Zilla, and this is on YouTube, at Batty Vision, tipped it in the air and then cradled it as he went to the ground.
Yes, it was. The tip drill. Yeah, that put Dunmore ahead to stay. They got a couple more touchdowns to go up 35-14. Then had to hold off some because Southern Columbia, the champions they are, did not go on the bus easily. They they came back with two touchdowns to force Dunmore to have to run out the clock, which they ultimately did. So Dunmore, their 30, that 35-29 win has put them into the next round. They play the Bristol Vikings out of District 1, which is suburban Philly. Ooh. And that's a team you don't know too much about. And uh, But, like you said, uh, how they ran out the clock, they're going to have to run the ball to be they, successful. They, they got to they gotta keep doing what they what they do. But you got to – Brandon Kajowski stepped up in this game. They're going to need him as they keep going through the playoffs if they want to get to Hershey in a couple weeks for that state title game. And where, and where is that game? That will be, that'll be also right up at Valley View oh, wow. on Friday night. This Based on the bracket, even if Dunmore wins, this will be the last – game in this area that Dunmore plays. If Dunmore wins this game, they will have to travel next game. So that did it for Dunmore. As far as our other teams, we had to say by we had to say uh, farewell for the rest of the season for Delaware Valley, Abington Heights, Scranton, and Lakeland. They were the four other teams that played when we were still playing when we last left you. Happy trails to you. <laughs> I'm gonna be the doctor from now on. He's gonna be the DJ. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, uh oh, uh oh, a, a, a lot of good careers got, got. You know, they were ended. They were ended. We're not, we're not going to say they, they stopped because you, you can't argue the, the great careers of these kids. I mean, Shore from Delaware Valley, and, yeah, and Waiters and uh, Will, Waiters Quiller. and Quiller and uh, uh, Abington Heights. I mean, Dante Pasquicchio. I mean, he, he was a senior. I mean, we still got one more year of the Big Show. Yeah. Well, it's the Big Show. Anyway, a uh, little house cleaning here. Uh, in Quad A was Delaware Valley. They, they won the district championship over Scranton with a 27-16 win at Memorial Stadium a few weeks back. It was really the running game. Delaware Valley just decided to take the game completely out of Shore's hands you and, know, and just run the ball. You know what I wish is that they could play a rubber match and play. I, I, I wish they could have, yeah. Best of three, you know, one more. Play one, neutral field and just, one, just for fun. But yeah, you know. for the whole... Well, that's a that's a good thing though. I mean, there, there'll be there'll be plenty of basketball games because all those kids will be playing basketball pretty Absolutely. much. We did that when I graduated in in '90. We were state championships. Class Timmy Ruddy was yes. a senior, and uh, rumor had there was a big who's better, us or Berwick, and we ended up playing Berwick after the state championship. I believe they lost six nothing or something like that. If I remember, it was a great game. Yeah, you know, it's kind of nice to see that laid all on the field and see who's bragging rights, if you will. Tim Ruddy, I think he went to a certain school. Notre Dame. Yeah. Da, 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 More on that later. Don't get out of yeah. your, Don't get ahead of yourself. Yeah. Doctor. Yeah. You're you're breaking my train it's of thought. It's called foreshadowing. Yeah. You're breaking my train of thought. Anyway, Delaware Valley. They won the district title. They they ended up having to re get a rematch with Parkland last week, and Parkland got the better of them this time, 49-41, which was a. That would have been a fun to watch. For that. Yeah. That that's the thing with the sub region. If that was if that was a PIAA game, that would have probably been at Strand Memorial Stadium. To be honest with you, because, 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 I mean, obviously they got the fans up there and in there, but I mean that would have been a great game to watch. I mean, both those teams are very good. Parkland is an established. It's like the Lehigh Valley Conference is like playing the SEC in college football. They're good teams up and down the line, which is what uh, what happened to Abington Heights as well. Abington went down to Berwick, got the upset, upset Berwick 44-35 in a game that I didn't think had had that much scoring in it. And uh, Abington just—you don't out scheme George Curry. That's the one thing I, I never, never thought could happen. You could have never out scheme the general, and that's exactly what happened. But then uh, Allentown Central Catholic just ran rush shot right through Abington's defense for 300 yards. And in a, play, in a state playoff game, if you can run the ball that well, you can't be beat. It's just a pop because the, te the teams are just too good this time of year to, to, to be to be anything. You gotta play. You gotta run the ball and stop the run. I think that's that, that's the key. It's always the key in high school football. In any kind of football, you run the ball, stop the run, you're gonna win. That's it. A lot of good. Uh, a lot of good years all around. Yeah, and I, I also I want to do one thing here. Double, we have done more play this week, but. Next Friday, winter sports start. Go figure that. We're going to have, I'll tell you what, we have some good wrestling teams, Delaware Valley, West Scranton. 
We have scrape prep swimming will be will be a major talking point. And we have a couple state contenders in basketball, Holy Cross, Grant Prep, Abby tonight. This is going to be a very interesting winter sports season. And we got a couple hoops, of our favorite uh, girl basketball players in here again. Yeah. See where we'll see updates on them. St. Clair, St. Paul. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk yeah. to the coach. We'll yeah, uh, but we still, have, we still have a little bit of football here from our uh, good friend, the Falcons. Westside Falcons, Super Bowl champion. Season done, right? No! Eh. In the season that just doesn't want to end, guess what? We were invited to play a national tournament. This is a national prep, Youth and Football Association, Mid-Atlantic National Championships, Richmond, Virginia. Are you kidding me? They want the Falcons to come to Richmond December 14th through the 16th. The C team, which is ranked fifth in the nation, thank you for the assist, and the A team, you got the five, is seventh. Seventh in the nation. <laughs> I can't do math. Uh, they're going to be down there. Uh, there's all kind of fundraising going on. If there's any way you want to help these kids and everything, you stop by Maddie's at 2303 Jackson Street. Uh, you want to leave any kind of donation, help these guys uh, get there. You know, you know, it costs money for these trips. A lot of families don't have it. It's around the holidays. So if you want to help, we can uh, definitely pass it on to the right people or contact if you know someone in the Falcons organization. We wish the best of luck to the Westside Falcons, the purple pride of Westside. Cheers, kids. Back to you, Lutz. I guess that gavel banged right there. You gotta love why we, uh, he's, he's ours. You know, we got all this paperwork here. Let me show you. This kid, right off the top of his head, sorry, ESPN, he's mine. Unless you want to pay him $100,000 a year, and then he's going to give me $25,000 a year just to go. Your call. We're going to take a break right now. Coming out after the break, this pretty bad. Whoa! Fast, fast fisherman. Fast, pretty fast fisherman. <laughs> yeah, he's quick. Good save. Good pretty save. Pretty fast fisherman here. The doctor's gonna run your house. <laughs> we'll be right back after this. <laughs> <laughs> Now, mm -hmm. when it when it really mattered, it, yeah. 
I mean, that, that was a very, yeah, there was a, the game was very close. It was going to be tested. close. I didn't think Notre Dame was just going to go in there and just walk through that game, even with USC with their backup quarterback. But USC, one thing that is hard to, you know, despite them not being ranked, they were ranked number one to begin the year for a reason. Yeah. They had the, some of the best skill position guys in the country. And even without Barkley, uh, they still uh, were a big threat in that game. Notre Dame's defense did a good job. Offense got rolling slightly with the yeah. freshman, uh, redshirt freshman quarterback. Everett Golston. Golston. He, he did pretty well. He's been making strides. The past yeah, few he's years. Been, doing, uh, been doing what he needs to do. You can't argue, can't argue. But here's the uh, here's the big argument: Should Manti Teo win the Heisman Trophy? That's another big story now. December eighth, a couple weeks from now, uh, they're deciding the Heisman. Some of the finalists it's, are expected it's, it's, to be. It's a, it's, a, it's a. I think it's a two horse race. It's Teo and uh, Johnny Football from Johnny Texas. Johnny Texas Football Manziel from Texas A and M, who th they're going to be going to a BCS bowl. Uh, no, because no, I think I think Florida probably will be the uh, other. Okay. It, it, it's crazy. That's crazy. There's so many SEC teams right now. One of those teams is going to be playing before New Year's, <laughs> maybe even two. They had a few signature wins, and uh, just watching his game out of the corner of my eye the other night while I was watching Notre Dame, he made some amazing plays in that last yeah. game of the year. It, it, it is. It, it, yeah, it's, it's probably just two. It, this is like this is like a Tebow year. Like, I know I had to throw a Tebow. Nobody's really separated themselves from the Heisman. The yeah. interesting thing about Manai Teo's uh, his candidacy is that his defensive uh, stats are very similar to Woodson's. No, no. Woodson's from from Michigan. But almost, I think he had one more interception than him. Yeah, but of course he has more tackles for loss. Yeah. Woodson had a couple of touchdowns that year, I think. Yeah. Which is big, and he's also on national. He's the best yeah. defense, one of the best defenses in the nation. Yeah, we'll see, yeah, we'll see what happens, but, we, but, but we're not all about Notre Dame here. I mean, we, we also got to give some love to our Scranton kids. We had a couple of locals wrapping up their college career uh, yeah. this week. We had Matt McGloin from Penn State. Matty! First walk-on uh, to ever be a quarterback at Penn State to start. And yeah. Hubie Graham from Pitt. Right. My best friend. Well, I think best friend. I think Pitt still has one more game. I think yeah. Pitt's trying to get bowl, yeah. bowl eligible in their swan song from the Big East. Before they go to the ACC. Yeah, they do have. Uh, they do have another. Who do they got next week? Uh, I think C Cincinnati. I think Cincinnati. Cincinnati. Or but they got to win the game to get bowl eligible. And then from there we'll see. Cincinnati has played pretty well. This yeah, year. Pitt, Pitt coming off their big win over uh, Rutgers. You the dying man. Rutgers of BCS bit. Oh, they have another Graham uh, on that team. Ray uh, Graham. Ray, Ray Graham. Graham. Who's the heck of a player? He really is. Tino Cesare was the uh, player of the week. Yeah, Tino Sinceri, player of the week for their conference. Yes, I maybe should have had that information, but I thank you. For yeah, you're gonna di dynamite drop in, uh, DJ. You're gonna songs, I gotta be able to throw out yeah. shots. Yeah. Dynamite drop in there, DJ Bugsy. Pretty good. But, uh, but like we said, McGloy th threw it all in all. He, he threw for over 3,000 yards. He's he set a lot of records at Penn State. He's good shot over 5,300 yards. Yeah, yeah, 46 yeah. touchdowns. Yeah, he's tied. Yeah, he's set. Yeah, single season record in touchdowns. Tied, set. Uh, he's yeah. He, uh, he's probably he's, right now stats wise, probably the the most uh, he has most of the records. In, yeah, for Penn State quarterback, especially that, which is astounding, given the fact that he wasn't really named a starter until this year. And yeah. they kept pushing him the to the side. They wanted to give it away every year, mm -hmm. but. And you know what? He stood up for Penn State when Penn State was kicked, and he, and, and he stood up for them. And I gotta say, it's got, we've always been on his side, but it's been cool to see how the Penn State na uh, the nation embraced him. Embraced the him. Nittany the Nation, yeah. The Nittany Nation. I mean, well, through, 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 yeah. through, <laughs> through everything that it was that happened for Penn State to win that game against Wisconsin the way they did, just just to close the seat, send those seniors out who, who went on camera say, "We're staying put. We're not going yeah. anywhere. We're." Pe for them to win that game the way they did will, will always be something that that, that the something team to remember. Right? Yeah, especially and, especially they had the Mahdi tribute after yeah. Mahdi went down. They put the 42 on his on the helmets. A, a lot of the talking heads and experts said they would win probably four games this year. They were a play and a call away from winning 10. They could have won 10 games this year, and uh, they, I mean hats go off to the Penn State I mean, seniors. I mean obviously yeah. now. Next year we'll find out what the real, what's real, because you know. Real ramifications. Yeah, because yeah. you, you can't, you, you can't expect everyone to stay, because because kids could still transfer until the beginning of next season. So, we'll see what happens. But it was a great way to to win this, 
end the season, send those kids out, and set set a new course for Penn State. Yeah. Indeed it was. Uh, yeah. Anything else? That's all we got. I think it was the college uh, spectrum yeah. there. But uh, it, again, Pitt plays this week. They're playing Cincinnati. Cincinnati has a kid with local ties. Uh, former Lackawanna really? linebacker. No, they, no they played Cincinnati earlier. Oh, they did. Yeah, they Yo, Pitt! Anyway, yeah. I, I do, but 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 it will be it will be Pitt's last game of the Big East before they go to the ACC. Rutgers, they they're trying to beat Louisville to go to the BCS on top of them going to the Big Ten in two years. Crazy college, football's just crazy anymore. It's crazy. Yeah. Everyone's trying to leave the Big East now because the Temple Owls got there, and I can't say I blame. <laughs> but now uh, on the NFL, uh, I'm gonna interject before you even start. I just want to say. Cheers to the Indianapolis Colts cheerleaders. The I thing know. I've ever seen in my life. A couple of the cheerleaders actually oh, shaved their head. Yes, they thing did. I've ever seen in my a life. tribute to the to the, the coach Pagano. The coach Chuck Pagano. That's awesome so, stuff, right? Was there. going through uh, chemo was going through chemo and and, leukemia. Yeah. and that was very That's cool, cool to see. Speaking yeah. of those Colts, they're a team. They cool. are seven and four and on top of the wild card standings because uh, and they have a because there's this, this team here that this helmet's in front of me. I don't know. I don't know what the deal is with, with this team anymore. Karma. That's all I'm going to say. And the AFC. Karma. It seems like we have all the division. The division. Whoever's on top of the division without a monumental collapse are going to win it. Yeah. You got the Pats, Baltimore, and the Texans are all three up. Denver's four up. Yeah. And no one's really surging. The, the, char the Chargers are constantly blowing games because they keep giving up four for 29. Yeah. And Norb Turner is currently on MonsterJet.com looking for a new job for next year. So, is, sure so is, even when, uh, even no matter what happens tonight yeah. with Andy Reid, he's going to be also. Um, the, so uh, the, Col the Jets might have an opening. Colts uh, have, yeah, yeah. Fi Colts have the inside they, track. They also have an opening for new number one fan after Fireman Ed has oh. put up the helmet. Fireman Ed, yeah, yeah. Is he, yeah. He don't he's, even he's have taking the rest of the year off, which we have gone 27 consecutive shows by mentioning people. Yeah. yeah, they don't even have him now because he bruised his ribs. Yeah, playing mad. Yeah. Maybe yeah. Yeah. I think it wasn't. Probably wasn't from being on the field. I don't think so. No. So, uh, I mean, Indy, they have the inside track. Who, see, who knows if they hold yeah. on? We'll know. And at this time of year in football, we'll, we're going to know more in two weeks. You never know. You never know. We're going mean, to know more in two weeks. The uh, NFC, the, the Giants kind of reasserted their authority. Giants are two up right now. Yeah, they, yeah, they reasserted their authority. What happened last night with that game against the Packers? I, the Packers, I do not know. Apparently, I, I, I respect their coach, Mike McCarthy, but I don't think he informed them they were, they were playing a real game yesterday because they got molly -wopped. Rogers didn't do much of that. No, last he night. did not. He did not. The belt, if there was, if he did have the belt last night, it would it'd be around Justin Tuck's neck right now. Dick I was getting him in the arms. Dick uh, Giants, Dick after sleep, well, sleepwalking we can't, we can't, yeah, a few we weeks, they, they look, they're up, they're up too on Washington and Dallas. Big, next Monday night, the Giants of the Red at Giants at Redskins next Monday night. That's early, early prediction for me, I think Giants are going to win that game by 30 points. At least. I think they're going to really give it to the Reds. Oh, you, you're mad because they beat your Cowboys well, on Thanksgiving. Well, it, it actually be better for the Cowboys for Washington to win. I mean, but yeah, because you, you can't make heads or tails of the wild card in the NFC right now. Uh, well, it looks as though uh, the Packers are going to probably clam. But yeah, but you never... They bounce back and claim one of those. Yeah, because the, the Seahawks can't win a road game. The Packers... The Packers and the Bears are kind of like somebody's got to win that division. We got uh, Green Bay is down one to Chicago, who's eight and three, seven and four. Green uh, Green Bay and down uh, one. Quick, six and five Minnesota, six and five Seattle. And quickly, one. Kaepernick or Alex Smith, who should start for San Francisco? I have, Alex Smith. I have no idea why Alex Smith isn't starting now, Alex but Smith. it's seeming to work. So now you, you reach what they call the. Point of no return. You have to go yeah, back and I think we've reached the point of no return. Alex Smith having his best year as yeah. a pro after leading them to the yeah. NFC Championship. Yeah. I, hey, I don't get it. It is what it is now. You gotta stick with Kaepernick, I think. Yeah. How about you? Uh, you gotta the hot hand. You gotta go with the hot hand, but they both have had hot hands. So <laughs> almost a few ties yesterday. The biggest play of the year happened. Do you know what play that was, Mux? Uh, is it 4th and 29? 4th and 29. Yeah. The, uh, the, against uh, the Ravens, against the yeah. Chargers. which 4th and 29, they didn't even, they, they didn't even need a penalty. They, they, they dumped a pass off. Which a a four-yard pass of scrimmage. to the Ray Rice. Ray Rice takes it 29 and a half yards. Rutgers. Which is ridiculous. We got yeah. the kid from Rutgers. Rutgers. 
And that. And Norm Turner's like, yeah, I think my, I, if my job wasn't gone already, I think I've lost it now. Several hey, hey, Norm's going to be a good coordinator next year. A good offensive coordinator of some team. Yeah, but. We look forward to see, like we said before. Yeah. Talk, talk how, about about this? how about this? How about this? Bloody Monday is New Year's Eve player. this year. Ooh. There'll be a lot of coaches drinking on Go, that. Going night. out with, yeah, a little champagne. I gotta say, I hope Jason Garrett may be among them if Dallas doesn't bounce back because yeah. these guys aren't responding. Rex, if Rex and Rob Ryan might be having, yeah. having a nice time in uh, this, yeah. th uh, this uh, bloody yeah. Monday. Yeah, I think uh, we, I think we pretty much rang the rang the rag dry here. Somber Sunday was uh, last Sunday. I don't know what they call the college one. Gene Chizik lost a job. One national, one national title less than two years ago. Lost a job this year. Can't say you don't we can't, it. we can't get the doctor to, to be quiet here. There's <laughs> going so much news, Muggsy. Yeah. This is a kid who goes on about field hockey for three hours. <laughs> Sorry, right, I love you. That's why, that's why I sit so close to you. Not that way, though. In every way. I love you. All right. <laughs> okay. I think we're I think that's appropriate time. That's it? Yeah. It up. That was about eight minutes exactly. You sure? You don't want to mention. Uh, you got any shout outs? Well, uh, John Cena news. Oh, Cena. He may be injured. He might have a bad knee. This has been the sports report for January 7, 2013. No, November 26, 2012. Yeah, yeah Marty McFly. Coming up after the break, Marty McFly. Stepped on my gotcha. joke. Doctor. You're watching Maddievision.com. Razzle wants to go to Subway and get her vegetarian hoagie. We dream big.